Welcome back to another UNC football recruiting podcast here on TarHillIllustrated.com. And if you're checking us out on our YouTube channel, Tar Heel Illustrated, I'm THI publisher Andrew Jones. And joining me, as she almost always does when we talk about Carolina Tar Heels football recruiting, our very own Miss Dina King. And Dina, uh, this is going to be a kind of a fun podcast, something we haven't delved into yet before. But, but something you and I have talked about for the last couple of weeks now is we've watched Carolina staff hand out offers to kids from the class of 22 and the class of 23. There are a couple of themes that are taking place that have become rather obvious. And that's what we're going to hit on here in this podcast, sort of the strategy that staff has right now, given the fact that it hadn't been able to see any of these kids play in North Carolina, Virginia yet because they didn't have fall seasons. So a lot of their offers are going out to kids who had fall seasons because at least they have recent game tape on some of those kids. So let's kind of dive into the class of 22 right now in which uh, we ran a two-part series starting earlier this week. And uh, the second part we ran Wednesday morning with the class of 23, looking at five recent offers in both classes. And in 22, the breakdown is real simple. Two kids from Georgia, one from Pennsylvania, one from Florida, one from Tennessee, none from Virginia. So when you see these offers rolling out, you send me a text or call me and say, AJ, they're not offering kids from North Carolina. I sense a strategy happening here. So why don't you kind of take it away from there in your best Dina King accent? <laughs> well, it's kind of like you said, North Carolina didn't play this past fall. And so, um, they want to have time to evaluate these kids because we've seen with Mac's strategy, they're not just going to throw out offers to any, anybody and everybody. They want to be uh, take like the Clemson and the Alabama uh, way of doing things, being very selective on who they offer and making that offer seem very, very special to these kids. And so, with no uh, season going on and getting ready to start in North Carolina in February, in the last part of February. So I feel like there, there'll be some possible, some more offers going out to some of the kids, um, especially in the 23. Uh, they, they got a good core of offers in the, the 22 class in the, in the state. I, I believe they have around 12 uh, in-state offers and, they're in really good shape with uh, a lot of those. So, uh, but Mac has told us numerous times that they will go in their recruiting blueprint, which is from the DC area to Atlanta. And now we're seeing them try to dip into the Sunshine State. Yeah, uh, we uh, around 75 offers so far in the class of 22. Uh, 12 are from North Carolina, but but that number is going to go up once they start seeing these kids play. Virginia and North Carolina start playing later this month, and and that's really going to help, especially the kids in North Carolina. Virginia, they've already targeted some kids, and actually a lot of Virginia kids were, uh, were at multiple camps this past summer. We happened to see uh, Jacob and I went up to Virginia Beach, and we were at one of the game academy camps up there, and we saw Zach Rice and George Bedway. We saw Tyshawn Chapman. We talked to all those kids there, did interviews with them, and Chapman is now committed to Carolina in that class of 22, and certainly Mac and the staff would love for Pedaway and Zach Rice to commit there, but there are other kids in Virginia. You know, they're, they're looking in the Richmond area, up in the D.C. area, uh, but also I think what's really interesting is <laughs> – the Larry Porter element here. Larry Porter is an excellent recruiting track record and he spent time recruiting Georgia. And I think that there's a little bit of a Florida thing there too, but isn't a lot of this also the fact that there are so many really good high end kids in Virginia. And obviously there always are in Georgia and they're just kind of recruiting on a different level. Now they loaded up in 21 in North Carolina because North Carolina had a phenomenal 21 class maybe 22 isn't as phenomenal. So if you're going to bring in, throwing out a number for discussion here, 22 kids, well, maybe you don't bring in 17 or 18 from North Carolina. Maybe you bring in 10 or 12 from North Carolina and you go to Georgia and Florida to get, or Virginia to get most of the rest. Don't you kind of think that's probably how they're viewing things right now? Yeah, because 20, the North Carolina class in, <clears throat> in 2022 is very top heavy. 
I mean, you got you got Travis Shaw up there at the top, and then you got guys like Jalen Walker, Malachi Hamrick, uh, Omari and Hampton, Michael Allen, uh, big four star Benji Gosnell, who's uh, right now committed to Ohio State. A lot of a lot of top heavy, you know, because uh, you you look at twenty one. There was a lot of four stars and a lot of high three stars. This year, uh, not as many. I mean, I think Rivals has listed the top 25. Carolina's offered around 12. Um, and some of those four stars that are in North Carolina, Carolina hasn't offered yet. And it may be because they – various reasons. They, they may want game film to evaluate them. Or simply, there's some position groups in North Carolina that are very that, that, that got a lot of depth: linebacker, wide receiver, defensive line. There, there's several top prospects, multiple kids that you know maybe North Carolina. I'm going to throw out the linebacker group. They got four offers out to North Carolina linebackers, and uh, Jalen Walker, Malachi Hamrick. Albert Red and uh, the Xavier Simmons, they must, Carolina must feel really good about their chances with all four of them, because they've not even offered a Torin Wright, who is a four-star from a very well perennial program, Al Brown in Kannapolis. They've not even offered him, uh, and that's not throwing nothing off on him. It's just maybe they've not seen him on tape enough, and or they feel like their odds of landing some of those guys are, are really great. Yeah, I would think they're in very good shape with a couple of those names you just posed. Let's throw out a couple of names in class of 22 before we hit on 23. Outside of North Carolina, recent offers that Carolina fans should keep an eye on if, if, if they follow recruiting pretty heavily. Uh, pretty heavily. Keon Saab is a four-star athlete. Uh, he's told you that, that Carolina's recruiting him as a safety. He's originally from uh, North, uh, New Jersey, but he's at IMG Academy down in Bradenton, which you were at just a month ago. Uh, what can you tell everybody about Keon Saab? National recruit. Now, you just said he, he moved from New Jersey to go down to IMG. And IMG, if you've never been, it's a different world. It's almost like a mini college campus. I mean, they put a lot of emphasis on the individual sports, football, basketball, golf, tennis, and everything. Keon Saab, he's listed as an athlete. Most schools are recruiting him as a safety. I mean, he can play a little bit of wide receiver. He's, he's that frame that I think UNC really likes, around 6'2", 190, 90, 195. Um, the Dre Bly factor, of course, is going to be huge there. Um, so – Always. A national recruit that has a who's who's of offer list. So it's going to be interesting to follow his recruitment. Also, uh, that's Keon Sab, S A B B. Keishon Sap, S A P B, a four star offensive lineman from Leesburg, Georgia. You actually think that there's a chance he could end up a five star, and he's certainly somebody that Carolina is very, very interested in. He's also one of the recent offers from 2022. Let me back up. When we talk about recruiting, North Carolina are not, it, they're not battling East Carolina, maybe South Carolina, maybe still a little bit of South Carolina, the, those type of programs. Now they're battling Florida, Alabama. We know they, they're battling Clemson, Virginia Tech, Penn State, Ohio State. So this is a prospect in middle of SEC country that has, I, when speaking to him, he has a unique interest in North Carolina. Cause you can, you, sometimes you can tell when, when you're, you're talking to these kids, their interest in school. And he was just, first thing was, I, I can't wait to, to get on campus. I've got to get on campus. And I'm like, uh, why is that? And he's like, my mother is originally from the Jacksonville area due to military, uh, um, due to her being in the military or family and stuff. 
And she always tells me how beautiful it is up there. So he has a really legit interest in North Carolina and can't wait to get up on campus. The staff is targeting some of the top linemen in the country. A lot of people think Zach Rice is the top offensive lineman in the country. Uh, this kid would be right up there. So clearly their vision is big. They have a huge vision about what can be achieved in the future. Uh, you look at the class of 2023, also five offers that we highlighted here over the last several weeks. Uh, one kid each from Florida, Virginia, Alabama, South Carolina, and Georgia. Uh, kind of the same thing there. They, they haven't, first of all, these are kids who are just sophomores. So the only tape on any of them uh, who didn't play in the fall was their freshman year. So they're not going to offer many kids just looking at freshman film. However, the kids that are outside of North Carolina that actually had high school seasons this year in which uh, all four of the five states that I just mentioned, they had seasons this past fall. So they've now seen those kids as sophomores and they get a much, much better idea about them. So basically the same thing with 23 as with 22, correct? All but Virginia. No, Virginia didn't play. So there's a kid on here, the Burkmeyer kid. They didn't get to play. So there, he's but he getting, camped. He camped a couple yeah, places. Yeah, he, he, he's, he's been on the camp series and combine series, whatever, yeah. up in the Virginia because they had several uh, camps and combines up there. But going back to, to North Carolina, uh, we have them down offering around 16 kids in the 23 class. And I think this, this is where it shows up about the COVID coming in and not – getting kids on campus and younger kids to come in because, you know, our relationships with some of the current Carolina players and, you know, the ones going in uh, the past couple of years, you know, we started things on them when they were freshmen and, and sophomore, they were, you know, you mentioned before interviewing Sam when he was a, a freshman. And I interviewed Sam like five games into his freshman year because he was already setting records. So and by, there, the time, by the time he was not even finished with his sophomore year in high school, I think we had run five stories on him. And now we see what he's like in college. People understand why uh, sometimes you you find kids that, that young that you cover that much because they are on that trajectory. Yeah. And so 16 kids have been offered only three North Carolina kids. Uh, Tad Hudson, a quarterback from Huff High School in Charlotte, is going to be a really top player when whenever they do the rankings. I I, I figure he's going to be a high four-star. Uh, Christian Hamilton, a wide receiver out of Hickory Ridge. And uh, Rico Walker, an athlete out of Hickory that I've seen several times. So it's, it's going back to this uh, not being able to evaluate. And I, I know there'll be more offers because – when when North Carolina starts for especially the 23 season, but they're just, you know, they're kind of uh, handcuffed on, on some of this stuff. It's very interesting to kind of see how this plays out. Basically, the, the, if you want to look at it from a positive angle, if you want to try to take a positive from this is it's given them a lot of time to evaluate film of a smaller group of players to look at offerings since they didn't have Virginia and North Carolina this fall. So they really zeroed in on kids from some of these other states. So while they want to see guys in person and offering from film is challenging, they had a lot of eyeballs watching a lot of film, maybe more so than usual with some of these kids. So they're able to really zero on and in on exactly what they want. Now, with North Carolina and Virginia starting up here in a couple of weeks, they're going to have time to really focus in on the kids that they want, that they're interested in from these two states. So we're going to learn a lot about their methodology here in the next couple of months because offers will go out. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, in this 23 class, I mean, these five offers that they give out, three of them are offensive line, two are defensive line. So it goes back to that theme that that they're going to go out of state for certain positions and maybe North Carolina's not that strong in the offensive line, and it, but they've not seen some of the kids coming up. It's not saying North Carolina don't have any good offensive linemen. 
It's like it's got to see it. They've not been able to to see it. I mean, I was involved with the VTO combine series that went all over North Carolina, and you know, we had several <clears throat> colleges, especially D two, and then there were D one that were they could view it on online, the uh, live streaming. So they did have some avenues uh, to watch some of these kids, and uh, uh, it's helped out a lot of a lot of kids just to get some film on, you know, combine work. Absolutely. Well, we're going to chronicle this. We're going to cover it. We're going to track it uh, as as the, the staff moves forward with handing out offers. And of course, you'll be all over the prep circuit. You're, you're bit, it's kind of weird. Your busy time starts up here. Your super busy time starts up here in a couple of weeks. <laughs> and on top, and right after that are going to, is going to be the camp series. So Miss King is going to be grinding big time here in the next several months. But I know it's a labor of love, Dina. And you could follow all of her work, all of our work as we track this over at TarHeelIllustrated.com. And of course, we will be doing regular podcasts on this channel as well. She's Dina King. I'm Andrew Jones. You've been listening to another UNC football recruiting podcast right here on TarHeelIllustrated.com. Click like if you like the video, share it. Send it to all your friends who care about Carolina football recruiting because we're always on top of it, and everything else Star Hills do in football and basketball. Thanks for stopping by.